Hi folks, Dan Bird here for a quick midweek update. I uh, just wanted to thank everyone that joined on Sunday for participating, spending three hours of your time. I hope it was informative and educational. It was a long three hours for me and I was kind of hoarse by the time I was done, but it was fun too. So hopefully you guys got a lot out of it. I've had a lot of people ask about the recording and my understanding, and it's really up to Zuber and his team, that they will format it and it might take a week or so for that to happen. So just stay tuned, be patient. It should come out in the next within the next week. And also included with, and everybody should get it. So anyone that signed up for the course will get the recording. Even if you attended, you should still get it. And you will also get all of the slides that I showed. So those will come with it as well. So stay tuned. I'll keep track of that and see um, see if I can figure out when it's going to come. So let's talk about uh, where the market was, what happened today. For those that are interested in getting my newsletter, you can either send me an email to breakpointtrading at gmail.com. And I will add you to the list. <clears throat> or you can now get the newsletter for free by just signing up with your email at breakpointtrading.net. So all you have to do is register your email. It won't ask for a credit card or anything like that. If you just want the free uh, newsletter, that's how you can do it. There's a lot more out there if you're interested in that. <clears throat> but that's the way to get the newsletter. I'm starting vacation tomorrow. And I have no idea what the internet uh, situation will be wherever I am. So I'm going to try to at least do an abbreviated newsletter each week. So I'll be gone for the next two weeks or the next two weekends. But I'll try to get it out there. It most likely will be on the website because I'm pretty certain that I won't be able to send the emails. I'll probably try, but may not be able to get the emails out. So check the uh, website and see if the latest one's out there. Hopefully I can get something done this weekend and the weekend after. So what happened today? <clears throat> Let's take a look. The first thing I'd like to do is to refresh everyone's memory on this particular slide. This comes from Stock Traders Almanac, and this shows uh, since 1971 what the NASDAQ typically has done. Now, according to Stock Traders Almanac, the uh, best eight months for the NASDAQ runs from October to mid-July. And you can see where it ends. This Essentially, this point right here was yesterday, Tuesday. So that's usually where it ends. That doesn't mean it's going to end this time at that point, but we're pretty far extended and I'll show you that in a minute. So I would not be surprised if we have a pullback and the rest of the summer kind of trade sideways. Now, next week is the Fed meeting. So if they do raise as they have been signaling, then that's probably a good reason to pause and the market to go sideways and probably sell off some. If they choose not to, raise, that actually might push things higher. So we'll see what happens on the 26th. But uh, keep this in mind, because right now, it might be time for caution, even though the market continues to go higher. I'll show that here in a second. Um, actually, let's take a look at what the market looks like. <clears throat> so one thing you can get on my website, even if you are um, just even if you don't even sign up for anything, even if you don't want the, the free newsletter or anything like that, you can still get the homepage just by going to breakpointtrading.net. You can also get the books page. So if you want to take a look at some of the recommended books that I suggest, and I'll keep adding to this, but this is available even if you don't register your email or you don't sign up for any of the other services, that, that'll still be there. Also, these five little charts here will be there as well. So let's take a look at the S&P first. As you can see, the S&P just keeps on going higher. Now, one thing that I said on Sunday was that there was, it looked like there was a negative divergence or a bearish divergence with the index hitting new highs, but the RSI, the momentum indicators were starting to roll over and hit new lows. You can see it right here. So there was a little divergence there as this one hit a new high and same thing happened with the PPO down here, the momentum indicator. But what has now happened after the last couple of days is the market has continued higher and the momentum has too. 
So the bearish divergences have essentially disappeared. However, having said that, I want to call your attention to a couple of things. I'm going to extend this support line right here out a little bit more. You can see where it crosses the 21-day moving average right there. And this one crosses at the 50 moving average. So that's important. And uh, by the way, when you click on this on the website, you should see these annotations as well. Also notice how far away the price is from the all the moving av averages, the 21 day. If you look where, how far I got, pretty much kind of the same distance back here. Usually it will come back to what I call reversion to the mean or back to the 21 day. In this case, it came back to the 50. But the 50 and the 21 in, in, the, in these two cases were pretty close to each other. They're pretty far away from each other right now. So this resistance line right here is right at the 21 and the next one down is right at the 50. So it would not surprise me at all to see a pullback at least to here. That's 40, 44, 42 is where the 21 day is. So somewhere around the 44, 40, 44, 50 area. And it could even continue down to the 50 day. So, but it could just continue higher. Now today's candle is a very small shooting star. And I'll take a look at this on a 10 minute chart and you can see it. So you can see that it just keeps on going up. And then the last few days has sort of gone sideways. Actually, this is today right here, the 19th. So the 19th, it went up a little bit and then came back down. So it looks like it's kind of running out of steam, kind of getting tired. And if you look at it on this closer view, this is a 65 minute. So there's eight 65 minute periods in one day. If you look at it, at it that way, you can clearly see this negative divergence right here. Um, so we'll see what happens. But my point is be careful. Um, I would not be buying anything new right now, even though the market seems like it's strong and, and keeps going higher. This is the time when you know FOMO traders will jump in. Um, and that's probably what keep, keeps pushing it up. But what, what that also means is it's very likely to run out of steam, at least temporarily. I don't think this is going to be any big, huge sell-off, but I do think that there is going to be a retracement. So I'd be careful. I wouldn't put on any new positions right now. I not necessarily sell any of the ones that you already have depending on where you entered those. So if you just entered in the last couple of days, then it's up to you. But if you've been in this for a while, if you've been in one for a while, then there may not be any reason really to sell it, but I wouldn't buy any, anything new at this point. I would wait to see how this plays out. And even over the rest of the summer, see how the summer plays out and next week for sure. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the Dow, the Dow actually you know, had a nice run and it has a bearish candle as well. So this means it traded all the way up to the top and then traded all the way back down by the end of the day. So the bears are stepping in now. The bears are they're starting to push it lower. Again, caution is advised. Bitcoin was hanging out at this resistance line. It's starting to fall a little bit, but it's still sort of like tracking sideways, just going straight sideways. And then the US dollar had been falling and uh, now it's kind of starting to make a, a bottom right here. So that might start to come back up. So that's my view of uh, where we are. The next thing I wanna talk about is what's coming up this Friday, which is options expiration. So you can see right here on the 21st, um, options expiration occurs. Options expiration week are at least the last two days, Thursday and Friday, and then into the next week. So into the next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we have the Fed rate hike. So if they hike again, I think this options expiration period is going to take hold. If they choose not to hike, then it might start to take off again. But in general, you can see what the market has done over the last, uh, since 1950, 73 years. We kind of hit a peak right here, options expiration, and then it just goes sideways for the rest of the summer. So be careful with this. One thing I want to show you, uh, which is called Max Payne, 
and then I'll show you from uh, breakpoints from their site. I'll show you the Max Payne calculator that they that they use. But let me explain Max Payne a little bit. Max Payne essentially happens on options expiration, and when whenever there are a large number of calls and puts, so the purple ones are calls. That means folks think that the mark the mark is going to keep going up. And the blue one are puts. So people think that the market's going to go down. So if you have a lot of them, as we do right here, on the put side and the call side, the point where these two reach equilibrium, where they are even, think of kind of think of a seesaw, where the seesaw is perfectly balanced. That is the price of max pain. And what that means is if the price has been going higher and the price at on options expiration is way over here, then it's to the, the benefit of market makers to push the market down so that they don't have to pay the premium for all of these calls. Same thing, same thing with puts. If the market has been falling and there's all of these puts that are in the money, then it's to the market makers advantage to push the market up and have all of these puts expire worthless. So that point where both the puts and the calls expire worthless is called max pain. So that's the equilibrium point. And the way to think about this is if the current price is higher than that max pain point, then you should expect selling around options expiration and a few days into the following week. If the current price is lower than the max pain price, then you should expect buying around that time frame. So that's why it's called opposite week or opposite George week for those Seinfeld fans out there. Uh, it's the market basically does the, the opposite of what it had been doing. So as we know, the market has been going up. So we should expect to see some selling, maybe starting tomorrow, Thursday and Friday, and probably into the next week. Now let's take a look at Earnings beat, and this is um, Earnings Beats is Tom Bowley's site. He does a lot of research and a lot of work, and he puts together a Max Payne report. So what he does is he calculates where that equilibrium point is for all of these different stocks and ETFs for the indexes. And what you can see on this particular one is the SPY, which is the S&P, the close, this is as of July 14th. So this is last Friday. Um, the close was 449. We're going to look at that in a second. We'll look at the Qs in a second. Uh, Max Payne, in this case, because the, because the, the uh, S&P had been going up, the Max Payne then would be lower than this. So Max Payne is at 423, which is a drop of 5.65%. NVIDIA, NVIDIA has been screaming higher. So max point pain for NVIDIA is almost 20% lower. Now, I want to be clear, that does not mean that that's the price NVIDIA will end at. That's not what it means. What it means is there is a greater than average tendency for NVIDIA to sell off towards that price, but it doesn't have to actually get to that price. So think of this as a directional indication or directional tendency of these stocks or, or the market. Same thing with Tesla. Tesla's down could be down 18%, down to 229. And here's the Qs. Qs were 379 uh, last Friday. I think they're higher now, but Max Payne is at 352 or down about 7%. So let's take a look at the Qs. And actually let's look at, uh, yeah, let's look at the Qs. So here's the Qs right here. You see they were higher. Last Friday was this red candle right here. And Max Payne said it could come down to 352. So 352 would put it way down here, right at the 50 day moving average. That does not mean it's gonna get to that point. Um, it could very easily get to the 21 day, which is reversion to the mean and also where a support line is. So it could very easily get to 370. And then all of the, that call premium between here and where the price is now would expire worthless. Uh, and it could keep on going into next week and go even lower then. So keep this in mind, the tendency for the rest of this week 
and into the first couple of days of next week is for the market to go down. Uh, I don't think it's, I think it will be temporary. I don't think it will be permanent. I think it might be an opportunity to get into some things if you if you are waiting. Um, the other thing with Max Payne is uh, it goes into the next week. And in fact, the worst days of every month are the 19th through the 25th. Now the 19th is today. So 19th through the 25th, every single month are the worst days and they happen to be the days right around options expiration. So that's a historical, little historical tidbit there to, to think about. But from now, from today until the 25th are the worst days of the month. And that falls right in line with Max Payne and the directional movement that it could make by next, next week. So I uh, just wanted to touch on that. Uh, wh while I'm here, let's just, out of fun, let's look at some of the other ones, uh, Microsoft, down nine and a half. Remember, this is what they're going to end up at, but this is what they have, will have a tendency to gravitate towards. Apple, Amazon, if I sort these based on the highest max pain, you've got um, PHN, NVIDIA is the second highest one. Uber, Tesla, Netflix are all the high on the high end. Airbnb, Datadog, Meta, uh, those are all the highest percentages or potential for downside risk, Amazon, Adobe. Now, a lot of these are, are um, you, know, you, see how, you see how much net call premium is out there. $452 million just for Amazon. That's the amount of money that the market makers potentially could save by having Amazon end at the equilibrium point, which is 115. So, just interesting to look at all of these to see you know what's out there. Um, keep it in mind as we move towards options expiration and into next week. So the very last thing I want to do is talk about uh, something that I mentioned on the training session on Sunday, and then I forgot to revisit it. it was something that one of the subscribers asked me about. He said, "What about covered calls and uh, selling puts, um, cash covered puts?" How would you use technical analysis to determine how to do that? So covered calls means that you, and it's the safest um, options play out there. It basically means that you covered means you own the stock already. Call means you are selling it. So it's a bearish call when you're selling the stock. Um, basically you're, you're betting that it's going to go down. Um, or it's at least at the top. And if I open up my risk calculator real quick, because this is something that I did not show last week, but there are a bunch of very, um, let's see, where is it? Sorry, I should have had this open already. Okay, risk calculator. So I showed this last week and there's also a video on how this works that's open for anybody to watch. Uh, but there are some other tabs in here, with this risk calculator. One is order definitions. So it helps you understand how to, how to define orders. It also helps you understand options. So which ones are bearish and which ones are bullish. But the important thing that I wanna point out is the decay, the time decay of the premium as you move more towards expiration if you are a buyer then you want to have you want to buy your option as far out from from options expiration as possible because every day you own an option the premium will decay and you can see here within 30 days it just drops off a cliff and then seven days it just goes almost straight down so as a buyer you want to buy it when it's flatter way out here. So 120, 90 to 120 days, somewhere in that range, or at least 60 days. If you are a seller, however, the time decay works in your benefit. That means as the, the premium decays, you have more chance of keeping the premium that you sold. So if it goes down to zero and the price is still above where you sold the, the uh, put, 
then you keep all of the premium. Basically, it expires worthless, and that's good for you if you're a seller. Same thing with covered calls. If you are a seller and it expires worthless, that's actually what you want. So just wanted to point that out. Uh, there, there's a few things on these tabs, trading rules, things like that, that are really interesting. So that's all in the risk calculator as well. So let's put that together now on the queues. So the queues ended today at 385. I can see after hours, interestingly, it's already down $2.75 <clears throat> after hours. So that may be signaling to us that uh, that options expiration is going to start tomorrow. But at 385, if I were to sell a covered call, here's the calls on the left hand side. 385, I'm hoping that it goes down, but I want to capture as much premium as possible. So what this tells me here is at 386, I would sell this at $1.85. So you have to sell 100 contracts. So that's $185 you would make. Or 1,000 contracts, just multiply that by 1,000, $1,800. Uh, this is with a July expiration. Okay. So that's actually Friday. So that's Friday's expiration. Um, not very many days, so it's it's pretty likely that if the market does go down, like we just said, you could, if you had 100, you could capture $185 just by letting this expire worthless. And you wouldn't have to do anything other than sell this put. Now, I mean, sell this call. In this case, it's selling a call. So the reason you want to do that is you own the stock, you own the queues in this case, and you're hoping to capture some extra money if the queue rolls over. So the way you might do that with technical analysis is if you are selling covered calls, you wanna do it when the momentum indicators are at their highest, when the PPO and the RSI are at their tops and starting to roll over. Because if they're rolling over and they continue to roll over, like they did right here, you can see right in this area, that means if you sold your call there, you are hoping it's going down. And in this case, it did go down and the indicators are telling you that it's probably going to go down. So you sold the call a little bit higher than this. And that means it expired worthless and you kept the premium. If you are selling puts, which is the opposite, if you're selling puts, then that's a bullish move and you're betting that the stock is gonna go higher. So in the case of the Qs, now I look at the momentum indicators and I wait until they're near their bottom and starting to turn up, like right here. So you can see uh, as this um, stochastic indicator started to move up right here, I would sell a put down here around 355 and maybe again, pocket $2 for each one or $200 or on one contract, um, betting that the stock is going to go up. And if you do it using these indicators like this, then you have a much more likelihood that it will go the direction that you're expecting and it will expire worthless and you basically will keep that premium. So that's how covered calls and um, cash settle puts work. Uh, that's how you can use technical analysis to get into them. I do cover calls occasionally. You can also do it if you were in a position that went bad on you and you're trying to uh, rehabilitate the position because you can do this each time this gets to the top and starts to roll over. You can add it, add $2 by selling the call and that brings your basis down by $2. So if I, if I had bought this stock, let's say it, well, this one's going up, so it's hard to, to say that. But if I had bought it up here and it went down, then I wait for it to get up here and I sell the call and take the $2 and lower my basis. Anyway, that's how you can use technical analysis for covered calls and for puts. Now, one last thing is, interestingly, there is an ETF that does exactly this. There's an ETF called QYLD. It's for the NASDAQ 100, and it's a covered call ETF. So their whole job is to watch these indicators like they are probably selling covered calls on the NDX right now, the NASDAQ 100. 
because this thing is just going sideways. It looks like it's about to roll over. Um, you can you can see the the momentum indicators are near their top. So this ETF, it, this is exactly what they do. There are also some ETFs out there that do both uh, high value dividend stocks and they they do covered calls against those dividend stocks as well. So they are making money on two sides. They're making money on the dividend and they're making money on the covered calls each time they do that. So just some additional, those are advanced strategies, but I, I did have that question from someone. Uh, so I wanted to cover it here because I forgot to do it on Sunday. Hopefully they'll they'll watch this. So that's it. Um, if you want my newsletter, I'm going to try to get out an abbreviated version. Uh, go to the website, breakpointtrading.net, not .com, not, it's, it's .net. And um, just sign up, you know, click on, click here for the, the weekly free newsletter and it will ask you for your email and um, then you're, then you're in and you'll get it. So that's it for now. Thanks everyone for joining. And uh, by the way, there, there uh, are some form formatting issues depending on the browser that you use. So some people have had some issues with that. If you do, I recommend that you just go to one of these tabs here and usually it works that way. If you're doing it on a mobile phone, I recommend that you use the menu bars down here and it will show you the different pages very quickly that way and access it through that, that way instead of scrolling down to the, um, to the plans. That's the easiest way to do it. So thanks again. Uh, send me an email to breakpointtrading at gmail.com or log into breakpointtrading.net. Thanks again on vacation starting tomorrow. I would, I'll be back in two weeks, but I'll try to get the newsletter out if I can. Thanks, folks.